Vlad III, known as Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Dracula, was a 15th century prince of Wallachia, now part of modern Romania. His punitive methods exceeded typical warfare tactics, incorporating psychological intimidation and extreme physical cruelty. These actions were not merely tactical, but served as a display of his total control, employing fear and brutality as instruments of governance. The experiences of women under Vlad's regime, though less documented, contribute to his notorious legacy, underlining the pervasive atmosphere of terror he cultivated. Vlad III was born in 1431 in Transylvania, now part of modern-day Romania. His father, Vlad II Dracul, was the ruler of Wallachia, located to the south of Transylvania. Following his induction into the Order of the Dragon, a Christian military organization supported by the Holy Roman Emperor, Vlad II acquired the nickname Dracul, meaning dragon. Due to their geographic positioning, Transylvania and Wallachia were frequently embroiled in violent clashes, situated as they were between Christian Europe and the Muslim-dominated Ottoman Empire. In 1442, Vlad II, accompanied by his young sons Radu and Vlad III, embarked on a diplomatic mission to meet with Sultan Murad II. The meeting, however, turned out to be an ambush, resulting in their capture. To secure his own release, Vlad II contested to leave his sons as hostages. During their time under Ottoman control, Vlad III and Radu were educated in science, philosophy, and arts, besides becoming skilled horsemen and warriors. Nonetheless, there are accounts suggesting Vlad III may have experienced imprisonment and torture during this period, an experience that included witnessing the impalement of Ottoman prisoners, an act that would later influence his own methods of punishment. In 1447, Vlad's family faced severe misfortunes. His father, the Wallachian ruler, was ousted by local nobles and killed near Balteni, Wallachia. Vlad's elder brother, Mircea, was subjected to blinding and torture and was ultimately buried alive. While it remains speculative how these traumatic events influenced Vlad III Dracula's psychological development, they coincided with the onset of his notorious cruelty. Following these family tragedies, Vlad was released from Ottoman captivity. The geopolitical landscape shifted dramatically in 1453, with the Ottoman conquest of Constantinople escalating the threat of a wider European invasion. Vlad, assuming leadership, was tasked with organizing the defense of Wallachia against potential Ottoman encroachment. His leadership was marked by the decapitation of his rival, Vladislav II, in 1456, consolidating his power and initiating his rule. Despite regaining control, Wallachia was plagued by internal strife and destruction, largely due to the dissent among the local nobility, or boyars. In a strategic move to eliminate opposition and consolidate his authority, Vlad organized a banquet under the guise of peace. However, this event turned into a massacre as he ordered the impalement of the attending boyars, a ruthless act designed to eliminate challenges to his rule and instill a climate of fear. Impalement a method of execution employed by Vlad III involved the insertion of a wood or metal pole through the body, typically entering through the lower extremities and emerging near the shoulders, neck, or mouth. This technique was particularly gruesome, as the pole was often rounded to avoid immediate internal damage, thereby prolonging the victim's agony. The pole, with the victim attached, was then erected vertically for public display, underscoring the slow, painful death that ensued. Despite his reputation for extreme cruelty, Vlad is credited with bringing stability and order to Wallachia during his reign. However, the brutal methods he employed to maintain control are well documented. For instance, in 1459, he executed dozens of Saxon merchants in Kronstadt who were aligned against him, opting for hanging as the method of execution. Vlad's interaction with the Ottoman Turks were frequently marked by tension and hostility. In a notable incident from 1459, when Ottoman envoys refused to remove their turbans in his presence, citing religious reasons, Vlad purportedly commended their piety before ordering the turbans nailed to their heads, ensuring the hats remained permanently in place. This act reflects the extreme measures Vlad was willing to employ in dealing with perceived disrespect or challenge to his authority. In a communication dated 1462, Vlad reported to a military ally the extent of his campaign's brutality against the Ottomans. 
He detailed the massacre of civilians in the regions of Oblusitsa and Novoselo, strategically located at the confluence of the Danube River and the sea. In his own words, Vlad claimed responsibility for the deaths of 23,884 individuals, not including those killed in combat or incinerated in their homes. This communication highlights Vlad's unflinching approach to warfare and his intent to disrupt the peace and expansion efforts of the Ottoman Empire. Vlad III is estimated to have been responsible for the deaths of approximately 80,000 individuals through various methods during his reign. This total includes 20,000 people who were executed and then displayed outside the city of Targoviste. This gruesome spectacle was intended as a deterrent to enemies, particularly the Ottoman Turks. When the Sultan Mehmed II, leading an invading Ottoman force, encountered the forest of impaled bodies and the extensive carnage attributed to Vlad, he was reportedly so horrified by the sight and the stench of decay that he decided to retreat and return to Constantinople. The psychological impact of Vlad's actions on the Sultan and his troops highlights the brutal tactics Vlad employed to defend his territory and deter Ottoman advances. In 1476, Vlad's life came to a violent end. He was killed and decapitated during an ambush as he was traveling to engage in another battle against the Ottomans. According to numerous historical accounts, Vlad's head was sent to Mehmed II in Constantinople and displayed above the city gates, serving as a grim symbol of the Sultan's triumph over one of his most formidable and ruthless adversaries. While Vlad III is primarily associated with impalement, his repertoire of punitive measures included other cruel methods. Historical accounts suggest that he resorted to boiling his enemies alive, a form of execution not unique to Vlad but nonetheless horrifying. This adds to the grim tableau of his reign, illustrating the extreme lengths he went to instill fear and maintain control. Impalement, however, remains the most infamous of Vlad's methods. The procedure was meticulously carried out to ensure a prolonged and excruciating death. Victims were often secured by tying each leg to a horse, while a lubricated, sharpened stake was slowly driven through the body, typically entering through the buttocks, exiting through the mouth. Though variations existed depending on the specific punishment or message Vlad intended to convey. In certain extreme cases, mothers were forced to impale their own children. The stakes were arranged in various geometric patterns around the cities he targeted, often forming concentric circles as a form of psychological warfare and territorial marking. The height of the stake indicated the victim's social status, with the bodies left to decompose for months as a gruesome warning to others. These horrific displays, particularly the thousands of bodies along the Danube, reportedly had such a profound psychological impact on adversaries, including the Ottoman Turks, that they withdrew from certain engagements, highlighting the effectiveness of Vlad's brutal tactics as a deterrent, albeit through extreme and inhumane methods. Vlad III's reign is marked by his use of impalement and other brutal methods of punishment and control, not just as military tactics, but as means of enforcing his moral and social standards. His cruelty was not reserved solely for military or political enemies, but was also extended to the civilian population, including women whom he targeted under the guise of moral rectitude. Impalement was notoriously Vlad's favored method of execution, but his cruelty did extend beyond this singular form of torture. Records suggest that Vlad subjected women in particular to horrific treatment, often as punishment for sexual transgressions, such as adultery or premarital sex. His punitive measures were extreme and included the mutilation of genitalia and breasts, enforcing his stringent and twisted moral code. Moreover, Vlad's tyranny was not limited to the battlefield or political dissenters. He applied his harsh methods to civilians accused of crimes ranging from dishonesty to moral failings, with a particularly harsh judgment reserved for women accused of sexual impropriety. Reports indicate that he would employ tortures such as skinning, exposure to the elements or animals, and boiling alive, alongside his widespread use of impalement. In one instance, a woman was publicly executed and subjected to mutilation before being impaled, as a grim display of punishment for infidelity. Merchants and other commoners were not exempt from Vlad's ruthless enforcement of his rules. Those found guilty of cheating or other forms of dishonesty faced the same brutal fate as those condemned for moral violations. Vlad's actions, while extreme, were part of a broader strategy to instill fear and maintain control over his territory. 
However, the severity and barbarity of his methods have left an indelible mark on history, painting him as a figure of extreme cruelty and vindictiveness. Vlad III's rule was marked by systematic efforts to dismantle Wallachia's entrenched boyar class, historically known for their role in destabilization and overthrow of rulers. This aristocracy had repeatedly undermined royal authority, leading to political instability and frequent changes in leadership. Vlad's approach to governance was underpinned by a determination to rebuild Wallachia's political landscape on new foundations, ensuring his authority was unchallenged and absolute. To achieve this, Vlad eliminated many members of the old Boyer families, replacing them with loyal subjects drawn from the middle class and free peasantry. These new appointees owed their status and allegiance solely to Vlad, thereby reducing the potential for future insurrections and consolidating his power. Additionally, Vlad's measures extended beyond more political restructuring. They were part of a broader strategy to centralize government and weaken the feudal power of the nobility and major towns. By reorganizing the social and political order, Vlad aimed to modernize and strengthen the central authority at the expense of traditional feudal structures. The Dynasty clan, rivals of Vlad's own lineage, were particular targets of his wrath. Vlad viewed them not only as political adversaries, but as threats to his rule and the stability of his principality. His campaigns into Transylvania were often motivated by the desire to capture or kill potential dynasty claimants to the Wallachian throne. His actions against the dynasty and their supporters were ruthless. Vladislav II, a member of the dynasty, was killed shortly after Vlad's ascension in 1456. And during raids, entire villages harboring his enemies were decimated. In a display of his merciless approach, a captured dynasty prince was forced to recite his own funeral oration before execution, a grim manifestation of Vlad's resolve to eliminate all challenges to his rule. This is History on Fleek, and we'll see you next time.